Good evening, everyone. This, um, this meeting is being televised by BCA, and um, we, I do recognize a quorum. The uh, ordinance committee is made up of uh, myself, Shirley Azak, Councillor uh, Rita Mendez, Councillor Jeff Thompson, and Councillor Tom Minicello. And our, our clerk is our attorney, um, attorney Shannon Resnick. With that being said, uh, also, we, um, Councillor Fawa will not be able to join us this evening. He did have a previous commitment. Um, Madam Clerk, item number one. Ordinance, an ordinance amending Article 3, Division 2, Section 2-127, pay plan. Be it ordained by the City Council, the City of Brockton, Article 3, Section 2-127 is hereby amended as follows. Adding the following category, Information Technology Director, IT. Article 3, Section 2-127 is further amended by striking the wage scale for the position of the Data Processing Department Head and replacing it with the following. IT, Information Technology Director, minimum first year, $137,465. Second year, $141,558. Third year, $145,805. Fourth year, $150,179. Be it further ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton that Article 3, Section 2-127A is amended to include the IT category by replacing the first sentence of Section 2-127A, subsection 2, with the following. After completion of one year of service at the highest salary step for an F HRPLL1 through 3, PWPK, PRCC, LBTC, EM, BH, or IT position, the employee shall receive an increase up to 5% of the annual salary at the discretion of the mayor and without further approval of the city council. Invited to attend, Ward 7 Councilor Surly Azek, Acting IT Director Edward Medeiros Jr., Chief Financial Officer Troy Clarkson, or Dex of Me. Thank you. Um, I did speak with Mr. Clarkson, and he is unable to attend this evening due to a personal um, uh, preset uh, appointment. So he, um, Karen, Karen Prevalls here, our city auditor, and she will speak to us on this. Um, Karen, would you like to just present this, tell, give us some background information on this? Good evening. Hi, counselors. Thank you for having us. Today we're looking to add a position into the ordinance, which is the information technology um, director. And as um, mentioned, the salary begins at 137,465 to 151,79. And I can have um, Mr. Um, Medeiros give a little more information in terms of the position and what it entails. Sure. Um, within the um, IT department. We can do that. I just wanted to make sure we didn't get any like background. Um, did you research this? Is there research to back how we got to this figure? This is consistent with the other ordinance okay. positions um, that were recently amended um, this past winter. And this was just supposed to go on with them? Yes, so this would be in addition to the other positions that were amended, increasing the salaries um, okay. for those positions. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Director. Good evening. Uh, um, I'm not sh sure where you'd like me to start. I think uh, this position has been unfilled for years and only covered by a union member like myself. And this is what I believe is the city's uh, best foot forward to put what the mayor, I believe what the mayor feels is the right title and the right uh, person, say, in that position to be equivalent and on the same level field with the other department heads instead of it saying acting and being a union person like myself. So I think that's the, the big overall uh, thing to say. And it, for years, uh, my predecessor and the one before that, I, I think sometimes they would come here and even get um, questioned and wondering, I think uh, Councilor Rodriguez for years, I don't think that's any surprise, was, I think he was kind of upset that this hadn't changed and, had, and someone hadn't been promoted and made an ordinance director. And, and this is really, I think uh, a lot of the years past, there were money problems and different reasons why maybe this didn't happen. And I think there are a lot of other people out there with opinions uh, why it didn't happen, but this, uh, this mayor definitely 
mentioned, he wants to get this done and wants to get it added. So I, I believe that's really the whole overall picture and why we're here trying to get this. I think it review. also um, makes it consistent with the other departments and the department heads um, throughout the entire city. Thank you very much. Um, we'll open it up to the committee. Do you, Councilors, do you have questions? Council Thompson. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, good evening. Um, <clears throat> thank you for being here. So uh, I, I did sit on uh, the ordinance committee last year when we uh, went through the previous um, ordinance department head uh, pay structures. And um, <clears throat> uh, Karen, you, you, you stated that uh, this was consistent and I, I kind of been doing the math and I see that it is from the initial, um, the step one, let's call it, uh, up through the step four in the language regarding uh, the, the mayor's uh, discretion thereafter. So I, I do find it uh, consistent. So quick question, what, was there no previous information director position? Or uh, are we creating this position right now? Or So this position we created right now in the budget, there is an assistant systems manager, which Mr. Um, Medeiros currently fills. So this is a position that would be created um, consistent with the other um, department head um, director positions. Do we, do we know which department head we based this specific position on? I think that um, when you look at the department heads, yeah. in the, um, this I know is consistent with the auditor. I believe there's other ordinance positions that fall under, that serve as department heads that this information, I've been here for a couple of months, but in terms of the research that went into this in the finance director, it's definitely con, you know, consistent with what the other um, department head positions are that are ordinance positions. Okay, right, because uh, last time what we try to do is kind of categorize some of the different department heads um, and then find kind of, you know, uh, those department heads who kind of have similar job responsibilities, size of department, um, you know, uh, stuff like that. So I was, that's why I was just wondering, I know we had kind of different tiers um, and you said the auditor, uh, your position. So my position, and I think when you look at the size of the department and you look at the number of staff that you have to supervise, you may have two assistants or you may have a staff of six to seven to eight staff members and then having, being a director in that position, I feel that this position is consistent with other department heads that have that type of staff and the amount of responsibility that they have to oversee for the city. Okay, that's great. Um, and, that, and that's how we had it, we did it last time. And I just wanna make sure we're consistent. I wanna make sure we're fair. Um, and so uh, by reviewing this ordinance, the language of the ordinance, the amounts presented, and then your testimony as to um, a, a, a similar basis with other department heads who have similar uh, responsibilities. Um, I, I find this to be a, a fair and reasonable uh, ordinance in the way it's presented. Um, and, and just uh, for the, the, the committee's um, information, you know, uh, we, we had a uh, Collins, I think Collins Institute, um, that was the name, what, Shannon, was it the Collins Institute or the Collins Report? Or essentially, uh, we, we uh, a few years ago had a uh, report um, drafted by, I believe it's the Collins Institute, if memory serves, um, talking about city, um, uh, the ordinance, the ordinance positions, department heads, and uh, the need for Brockton really to, um, you know, uh, catch up with uh, surrounding communities, uh, with uh, some of the, uh, um, you know, the, um, uh, what, what do you call it, the, free market, um, you know, the, uh, whether it be uh, outside corporations or, because as a city, we're trying to attract the best, the brightest, and we, there's a lot of competition out there, not just through um, cities, but also private industry. And so uh, it's recommended that our city kind of find uh, some, you know, some uh, numbers that are, you know, competitive, essentially. And so um, I believe these are competitive numbers and, uh, uh, you, um, you um, Karen, who just job, was job searching a year ago, um, maybe you could add some um, insight onto the competitiveness uh, of this uh, amount of this salary. I think um, in the municipal market is very competitive. I think that a lot of um, people are looking at jobs in the private sector, and you know, as we attract 
people um, in, you know, different people that are looking to work for the city, the previous ordinance didn't include cost of living increase. So when the Collins Center did this evaluation and when the city council approved the amendment to the ordinance and really looking at the salary, the salaries are now really competitive and consistent with what, what other cities and towns are offering. Um, so if you look at you know Mass Municipal Association, you look at the jobs that are posted, the salary range for those positions are equal to the salary ranges that are currently being posted for the city of Brockton. And you can see that based off of the ordinance that was changed um, earlier um, in, during this winter. Right, right, and, that, and that's what we're trying to accomplish yes. here. Um, just one last question. Now, I don't know if this is something you can answer at the moment and the, for Mr. Medeiros, is, is your, your, so your title is that assistant systems manager position? Yes but you're acting as the department head for our IT department. Yes. I'm going to assume it's, it's the intention for you to take this position, or is this one that got to go out for, um, yeah, for uh, you know, uh, not, uh, not bid, but you know, uh, for advertising. advertising and the whole, and interviewing and that whole process, correct? I think the best way to put that is I am definitely a candidate for the position, but I think that's, probably best question, best question for the mayor. Okay. As a, I like to think he thinks I'm the guy for the job, but I think I would be out of place in saying that I am definitely the, okay. his choice. I think that's really gotta come from him. Right, and, that, and, that, and that's important. So, um, you know, for those at home, this is not a uh, done deal for one guy. Um, this is gonna be uh, put out for, for uh, advertising. I'm sure there will be, um, you know, an interview process. Um, but, you know, um, we believe you're doing a great job, Mr. Medeiros, and uh, we'll see how that process plays out. But um, we're, we're, I'm glad to hear that you will be putting in uh, your name for that position. But uh, that's, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Councilor Minicello. Good evening. Um, uh, Mass Municipal Association is a good resource for these types of, um, uh, for this type of data to compare different communities. So you did, I, I heard you just a minute, moment ago say that you did review and, and use some of that data in order to come up or, or make sure that these salaries are in line with uh, like-kind positions in, in similar cities and towns? I have, I mean, I'm on the site um, just looking at what other cities, because we, I have, you know, five positions and four to five positions in my department that I'm currently looking at. So I'm constantly looking at what other city and towns are offering, you know, what, what our competition is offering compared to what we have here. You know, there's a lot of, um, there's, you know, people looking at benefits and looking at, you know, vacation time, stuff like that. And so I have been active looking at different positions. And I know the finance department, you know, probably has been doing the same thing. I can only speak for myself, but I know they're very diligent in making sure that what we present is fair, um, it's equitable, and it's consistent with what other cities and towns are doing. Uh, just by looking at these these numbers, I, I don't see any uh, anything um, out of place at all. You know, this is a very important position. Um, if this department goes down, the whole you know basically city goes down. Um, technology is <laughs> we're not using paper and pencil anymore, everyone. So you know, this is a very important position. Uh, I certainly support paying that position uh, a fair, a fair uh, and uh, equitable salary compared to you know other other certain communities. But we are competing against the private sector. Um, so I mean, the good thing. Uh, people you know, enjoy is that they don't have to drive into Boston every day. Um, it's, it's a much better commute and like you said, certain benefits. So the salaries might not be as high as the private sector, but when you factor in um, vacation, uh, pension, uh, health insurance, other things like that, um, it does, the gap does close. You know, what, and when you just see a number, it doesn't tell the whole story. Um, you know, there's a, there's a whole package behind it, but um, uh, we, we need to have a, a fair and competitive salary in order to get talent because we, we want good people in these positions, especially staying on the cutting edge of technology. So the person, you know, for the position, um, you know, Mr. Medeiros, I'm, I'm, I'm new to the council and, um, you know, on the school side, you know, we where I came from, we have, you know, some very good people over there and, and I assume that, uh, you know, you're the same over here. I, I have never had any problems with uh, here and anyone complain about your department. In fact, I think from what I hear, you know, everyone puts in, rolls up their sleeves and gets the job done. So, it, that, that's so, great news. Yeah, so I mean, you know, 
we need to we need to be fair and competitive uh, because this is an important position in today's world you know so um, so thank you very much and um, I, I, again I don't see anything on uh, inappropriate with these numbers I mean they seem very in line uh, you know thank for you. a department head you know. well sir council council Mendes yes hello so I do agree with the um, ordinance as well, but I just wanted to clarify one thing. So we're adding on this new position, and then what happens to the position that he's currently holding? Will that just be substituted by this um, new position, or will it be just an addition plus the title that he currently holds? So my, um, my goal, I would like to see the position remain in the department so I could have an assistant director and one of the things that we talked about or the mayor and I and some other people is um, the position should move to what is called the department heads union the assistant director's position so that'll be in line with some of the other assistant uh, department heads and some of the other higher operational level positions and the salary should be some balance of what uh, for example what I'm getting paid and then where a person who leaves the union and will say not be getting overtime and on call and when they go to that department heads union you won't get that it's just rolled and part of your salary over there it's assumed that you'll have to work after hours and you'll have to participate so to the to the mayor and to the other people involved so far um, it is definitely, it de they definitely feel it's more appropriate to move those positions out of what's the BCEU union and move it into that department heads union. So I would like to keep the position. I think what would happen will really depend on how fast we hire people and how the money plays out for the year because I, I didn't budget for, uh, for adding an extra department head salary to the current budget because we, I don't think it was really set in stone how long it was going to take to get this stuff done and when it would happen. But like Karen said, we should be able to make something happen with funds that are already in the department if a person is selected and promoted. I can speak a little bit to that too. If this, if this position um, moves forward and it's used in the FY23 budget, we have sufficient funds to cover the difference in salary between the position of the assistant systems manager and this new, it's around, um, the, the way we have the available funds is through vacant positions. We have, there's approximately four vacant positions that generate about $16,000. So when you're looking at the difference between the current salary that's budgeted for the assistant DP system manager and the IT director, you're looking around $20,000, $25,000. That would be the difference if you're looking at the highest range in terms of the salary and that would be we would have sufficient funds in the FY23 budget to cover that. If you wanted to keep both the IT director position and the assistant um, um, system manager position, that would be another conversation, you know, with the departments, with the city council during the budget to see what available funds would be available um, to fund that position if we were to move forward with keeping both positions in um, FY24. But that's something that would have to sit down, research, look at um, what positions need, um, the current vacant positions, and if anything would need to be reduced. Um, but that would be a conversation that we'd have to have. Thank you so much for that. That was gonna be the next question, whether we budgeted for this position. So you do believe that for this uh, fiscal year, we're okay given oh, definitely. the vacancies? Because we have, we so currently we have four vacancies. They're around $68,000 a year. So as you look at just for the month of July and August, we've already have at least 60, we're, we have savings around $16,000 between July and August. So this would fund the position for FY23. And as a budget process going into FY24 would have to be, you know, have 
the um, finance department would have to sit down and figure out with the IT department how they would be able to continue and maintain their um, staffing um, going into FY24 with this new position. Okay, thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you, Councillor. Yes. Um, any other questions? One follow-up. Councillor. So, um, Mr. Medeiros, do you remember during the budget hearings um, that there were a number of positions that were unfilled and we were talking and I, and I said to you, do you really think that you're gonna be able to fill all those positions? You know, there were a number of, you know, and, and you know, you weren't sure, you know, um, so, the okay. positions that have, I guess, have you filled any of those other positions yet to, to date since since we had our budget? Uh, so, so we filled one, and we have uh, that was an internal that was an internal applicant. I think that's part of the problem that uh, th uh, with um, not part of the problem, but part of understanding what why it takes so long is once you post these jobs, you post them internally first, and if people are are eligible or are qualified, we need to interview them and we need to make a decision and then we can put it back out if they're not qualified or if they're if you need to look elsewhere for whatever reason so I think that the problem for me is that, that the whole process takes a little while so I've got one done and we've you got refresh my recollection and just tell me how many positions and what were the positions that there, that there was a number so, of certain so, so my position uh, was unfilled be prior to take to stepping into this role and that was network systems administrator and that one just got filled um, a week ago, and well, technically his, his first day was yesterday. Um, internal person, so his position is a head system analyst, and we're gonna put that one back out as well. But I've got an op uh, a job listing right now for desktop support specialist. We need two of those, and so that, that would be three total positions, and then another uh, system analyst for camera work primarily. To, to, for the camera systems. That's what we talked about at budget. So I need to get that other job posted as well, the camera one. But I was, I was really focusing on getting the network administration position filled because I, was, I wanted a little input from that person in regards to who we're hiring. Because two of the, those people, actually an assistant uh, network admin as well, two of those people will work directly for this network administrator. So I really want to involve this person in the process so that I don't shove something on this person that maybe they could have helped me identify it might have been a problem. So if all of those positions that, that were vacant and now one is filled, but the position that the person had, is that now vacant? It is. So, so if, if all of those positions are miraculously filled somehow, Will there then be a shortage of funds for this position? No, absolutely not. Oh, shortage of funds, you mean for the, the director position? Right, here. to be able to fund if, that. If, I had to, if, if I filled create, them all today? We're, we're hopefully going to be recreating it, right? But, but if all the positions you currently have that we've reviewed in budget were filled, wouldn't, this, wouldn't we be short for this position? We would be missing the difference position. of data manage, data data manager and department head. Yes, if they were already filled on July first, but like Karen said, we've only filled one. Right, and two that's months have gone by, so that would be the difference in funds that should cover us right from the department itself. Okay, right? Did I have that right? Sorry. Yes. Yeah, so as you were saying, if all the positions were to be filled right now. There is sufficient funds in FY23 budget based on the vacancies that for between July 1st and the current date. Going into FY24, if all the positions were filled, we would be short. Okay. And that's I why saying, yeah. during FY24, we'd have to sit down and reevaluate what they were gonna do for the department. I'm just conceptually trying to get my head around it, you know, how the money is, is filters in, but yes. You're right. That Those positions for a number of period, a period of time have not been filled, so that money has been sort of like still there, but not being paid out. So it's still it's so still it's available, available right, to right, cover right. the expenses. So, whereas yeah, it hasn't been paying anyone's salary yet. If this so. was July second, it would be a completely different yes. conversation. It would be coming to council if this got approved by the ordinance committee on how we would, you know, be able to fund the shortfall of what we would need for this position. But that that's not the case right now due to the amount of money we were able to save in the last couple Thank of months. You. And I wasn't trying to give anyone a hard time. I'm just trying to understand how the, 
how the budgetary money works in terms of the, the, the funding and the position. Oh, so. I, I understand, I look at that every day. That's the last thing I want is a shortfall. <laughs> yeah. I have to report it. Thank you. All set, Councillor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's before us this evening is actually, this has been long awaited. Since I've been on the council, we've been talking about this, uh, actually creating this department head um, position. Mm -hmm. So um, I will entertain a motion. Sure, uh, a motion to uh, um, approve, uh, a motion to uh, recommend, recommend favorably to the full city council. Second. Second. All those in favor? The ordinance passes. Thank you. Thank you, councilors. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. No problem. Have a great night. Madam Clerk, item number two. Ordinance. Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton as follows, that the City Council adopt the following amendment to Article 11, Board of Health, Section 11-181, License Fees, to include a $20, $25 fee for a one-day food prep and service permit. Invited to attend, Councilor at Large, Winthrop H. Farwell, Jr., Executive Health Officer, Dr. Eno Monacere, or designee. Thank you. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Councilors, I did speak with uh, Councilor Farwell, and um, he couldn't be here this evening with us, but he felt that you know this was important that we pass early on. This is, we're really, um, this is kind of to save money to the residents. So I know Dr. Mondesir, Director of Health Services is here with us. Would you um, like to speak on this at all or doctor? Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Good evening, counselors. Um, uh, what is the fee now for the, right as of right now, doctor, the, if somebody comes in to apply for uh, food prep permit, whether it's one day or one year, what it's it's one price, correct? Well, there is a base fee uh, for the application, which is a um, uh, hundred dollar, and then um, well, one twenty five rather, um, and then uh, it's our fee is uh, fifty dollars minimum. So uh, this would be um, a no one. And yesterday, uh, I met with uh, Councillor. Uh, Thompson and Councillor D'Agostino. And so therefore, uh, it's, I think there is a little bit of a uh, um, work in progress uh, for this. And then there is, I think, a semantic um, with respect to uh, how to frame it or how to work it, uh, how to put the language. So we're looking at um, um, a food vendor permit. Um, I think that's the language that we went over also yesterday in our um, uh, conversation. Okay, so this is all we're changing if this passes is we're just changing for if a resident comes in and wants to just have a one day food permits. We're really just to give them a savings instead of uh, to deduct that to $25, correct? Correct. Okay. Councilors, do you have any questions for Dr. Montezier? Yes, uh, well, not, not necessarily questions, uh, and it was a pleasure meeting with you yesterday to uh, discuss another ordinance, but from uh, my understanding, uh, what this is, <clears throat> is that the city does not currently have a one-day food prep and service permit. What we have today is an annual permit. Mm -hmm. um, as Dr. Montessor said, it's a uh, $125 fee. So. Uh, we have different festivals, different, um, you know, different activities or events in the uh, city where uh, there are potential vendors who just want to come in and um, sell, you know, their food product uh, at a one one time event. Well, they have to pay the $125 annual fee if they uh, um, appear for that one event, and so. Uh, and that, that, you know, some people find that cost prohibitive and then uh, will not participate uh, in that event. And so what we're trying to do as a city is to um, allow for this new one day food prep and service permit um, at this uh, reasonable fee of $25 uh, to attract uh, uh, more vendors uh, for more events um, and make it, uh, you know, um, cost effective for them. So uh, I believe that's what we're trying to accomplish today. And, and I believe it's smart to do that. 
Um, so we want to encourage as many people to participate in our events and our um, festivals. And so uh, by allowing somebody to dip their toe into Brockton on a uh, one-time basis for a $25 fee, I think um, will eventually um, help diversify some of the, uh, uh, the food services uh, provided in Brockton. So um, I do intend to um, you know, vote in favor of this ordinance. Thank you. Any other questions, counselors? No, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, motion to recommend favor, oh, Ed, sorry. Would you just make a motion to amend so that it's a uh, one day food vendor and service permit? Yes. So on the motion, do you? Sure, I'll, um, I'll withdraw my motion and I will uh, remake another motion uh, to add the word vendor after the word food. Um, so it will read one day food vendor prep and service permit. Um, it would read one day food vendor and service yes. permit. Yes, correct. So no, 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 prep. no prep then. Strike prep. We're striking prep, adding vendor. Gotcha. Okay. Second. So that's on the amendment. We're voting on the amendment. Yes, please. As amended, all those in favor? All those opposed, the amendment passes. And now- um, I will make a motion to recommend the amended ordinance favorably to the full city council. Second. Motion's been made and properly seconded. All those in favor? The ordinance passes back to the full city council favorably. Thank you very much, doctor. Thank, Thank you, you, doctor. Good to see you. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Second. We are adjourned. Thank you.